O oh Lord of God, we pray, Lord, you will guide us as we come to worship and to praise you this morning. We thank you for this day. You have given us your day, Lord, and we ask, O oh Lord, your help and strength. We commit into your hand, Lord, and we pray, Lord, you will guide us as we come to worship and to praise and to adore you, the living and true God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will guide and uphold and direct, and we pray, Lord, you continue to guide by your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, your blessing and we thank you, Lord, that you can draw us together to worship and to praise you and to glorify your great and your glorious and awesome name. We pray, Lord, that you will come and help us now as we come now to uh, think about this uh, final portion, the conclusion of uh, Peter's letter. And we ask, O oh Lord, your blessing. We pray now that you will teach us and help us and uh, guide us in the reading of your word and praying and, and singing. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. This encyclical helps to explain St. Peter's role in the church. Uh, a leader of the church, of course, in the past would, would uh, uh, present or have an encyclical. And uh, so often times, uh, some have called uh, these uh, two letters uh, Peter's encyclical. Um, and of course, it, it explains his role in the church. Uh, and that's important to understand that because maybe there have been some titles given to Peter that are not according to God's word. And we do have to follow uh, the word of God. It should be prayerfully considered, of course. And we leave that with you, wherever you may be listening, and, uh, and uh, uh, if you link on to it at some time, and we hope that uh, it will be of uh, benefit. And so we hope the conclusion of this um, letter, or this encyclical, uh, will be uh, some benefit here in the closing words and stages. And so we come to the reading of uh, God's Word, then, and uh, we're going to ask Rita, and then followed by Sam, and then uh, Dave to pray, please. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exhort you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I, Silvanus, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. She who is in Babylon, elect together with you, Greet you, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to you all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our second reading is uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 from 14 to 18. Therefore, beloved, Looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. She is in Babylon, elect together with you 
greets you, and so does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to, to you all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Dave. A gracious Lord, a loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for being able to come around your word again this morning, Father. We praise and thank you that since we last met in this way, you've kept us in that promise from your word, Lord, um, in all that you would uh, guide and lead us through the week gone by. We give great thanks. And again, Father, we ask that as we hear from your word this morning, again, you would speak to us if you, as you have in the past to each and every one. Hearer and speaker, uh, speaker and hearer alike will be enlightened from your word. Father. There will be just a word, a phrase, a sentence, or the, or the whole letter that we're going to hear from this morning, Lord would speak to whoever you're going to take this message to, as you promised in your word, that, that which you send out will hit the mark, so as to speak. So soften hearts of stone, hearts of flesh, to accept this word, Lord. And thank you again for the internet, which we are on now, Lord. And thank you for the church being able to be opened up again in this pandemic, Lord. So hear us not for our many speak, not for our much, much words, Lord, but look into our hearts. Amen. Bless us and bless your word to us and bless the speaker as well. Oh, we ask all this in Jesus' precious, most glorious and wonderful. Amen. Of course, uh, I maybe never showed you, but uh, there is the map, of course, from uh, the area. Uh, that Peter would be been uh, ministering in. And it, even it shows you, as mentioned there, Babylon at the far end. And whether or not uh, a, that would be the Babylon mentioned in Peter, uh, I do mention, explain it a little bit, to mention that this could be a code for Rome. On the other hand, there could be uh, very well a fellowship there um, at uh, Babylon, you know, too. Uh, it wouldn't be, it'd be in the far reaches of his, his area, but it's, it could be possible. Nevertheless, uh, I leave that, uh, uh, you know, a map with you to think about it. It's not important, I suppose, so much, but it mainly is to show you uh, the area there. You see that uh, Peter was Galatia, uh, Syria, uh, Asia it shows there, you see, and right up round the Black Sea, um, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. All that was part of uh, where he was uh, ministering. And uh, the people particularly he was writing to, whether he wrote from Rome or not, you know, that was it. Right. So let's continue then. Peter's encyclical concludes. Uh, a cyclical is something that be uh, written, a special uh, thing written by the leader of a church. And, uh, you know, we're not going into details of who that could be, but uh, uh, this has been called that, you see. And I think uh, people, I would encourage people to, to read this. Uh, regardless of what background, religion, or anything else you belong to, uh, I think it's a very important, it's historical and it's special and it's important to us for these days. I'm sure uh, the Apostle Peter has not really been made much of as far as his writings is concerned. Yes, there has been many statements made like, uh, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. And of course, really, uh, the evangelicals would want to say that that rock was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, 
right over. So, have we truly considered St. Peter's uh, two encyclicals? They are very important, uh, the reading there, and they are very instructive, and you would learn a lot about his life and ministry. Before he was uh, martyred at Rome, uh, you know, crucified upside down at his request. Been a Jew, the, the, the capital punishment would be uh, crucifixion. How sad. He didn't want to be crucified like his Lord, you know. And so that's tradition. That's not in the Word of God. And, and since it's not in the Word of God, then it's, it's part of uh, tradition's uh, history, you know, that's been told. Uh, and uh, it, of course, uh, we have to leave it at that. And uh, that may be uh, so. We don't know. We still believe that the, the true uh, history and word of God is in the word of God. Uh, and uh, we, we follow that. So Peter's uh, encyclical uh, concert, right? Our concluded. Right, the place, the persons. The power, the passion. And so there are some of the things, you know. And oh, yes, the peace. You mustn't forget that at the end comes in. That's important, isn't it, too, as well? Right. So the place, where is, what place? Where is it? Where is he writing from? Where is it happening? I didn't mention the map and the area of the churches that he was writing to, the people he was writing to, there's no doubt about that. And uh, so 1 Peter 5.13, she, that's the church, who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greet you, greet you, and so does Mark, my son. The interesting thing that Mark is there at this particular point. Whether it's just for the end of the letter or not, but uh, he is there with. How is that? Mark, of course, uh, was also asked by Paul to be, for to be with him. And Paul, of course, was, uh, was up in Rome. And it was nearing the, you know, the, the end of a, a safer time, you know, a little bit more, but then it was begin the beginning of the persecution, of Nero's persecution, the emperor of Rome. Where was Mark residing now, would be the question. Where was he residing? Where was he staying? Well, Paul's request for Mark, you know, he said in 2 Timothy 4.11, only Luke is with me. That was where he was there, uh, waiting his final, uh, his execution, really. I think it had been passed. His trial had been passed, and he was just waiting his execution, uh, beheading there, because he was a Roman citizen. Uh, get Mark, he said, and bring him with you for he is useful for me in the ministry. And of course, Mark then would have been there with him then in Rome. This was before the Neronian persecution in Rome. So thus Peter was writing about AD 62-63. Prox. Paul and Peter were martyred about AD 66-67. Round about that, yeah. The Babylon then may be a code for Rome. They would use a code, you see, because they didn't want to get Christians in any more trouble than they were in, and persecution from the authorities. So, 
the persons then. That's the place. Uh, and it's not going to save you one way or the other that the main thing is uh, it's just uh, some, something that uh, come there, not very clear. But it's not important then, you see, so much important. So the persons, what about them? How important are they? In 1 Peter 5.12 by Silvanus, or Silas, he's called Silas as a Jew, uh, more of a, Greek, a Hebrew name. Silvanus would be a Greek and Silas, or Silas, uh, uh, that he had been with Paul, and uh, so that uh, Silvanus or Silas was with Paul originally, you know. Our faithful brother, they call him, he's a faithful brother, that's wonderful uh, commendation. As I consider him, I have written to you briefly. So there it is. Uh, he's a very helpful man then, alongside Peter, he really would be a co-writer or a co-worker under the direction of the Holy Spirit in penning this letter, this encyclical. Peter dictates and Silas writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that's him being a Greek scholar, very good Greek uh, and uh, uh, there might be, uh, if, you want, if you are really interested to look into the Greek of uh, here and the Greek that Peter would write in his own uh, letter, uh, uh, that he, sorry, that he wrote in, his, in the Gospel of Mark that came there. But that came through P uh, Mark, of course, directed by the Holy Spirit. But we do believe it was Peter's preaching in the Gospel of Mark. So Silas is what we call a manuensis, and a, a you know, a, a, a postman, they would say. <laughs> I, I'm sorry that that uh, doesn't affect people. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, he, Silas is what we call an amenu, amenuensis. And that means a secretary or one who worked alongside with, as I said, with, with Peter and with someone. And a, a postman, of course, was the one who would deliver it to the churches as well, we, we think. But then we go on then to see the power, 512, the power. Well, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. Yeah. So he's encouraging them on in the faith. All those uh, readers, listeners and, and churches he's been to, he, he's encouraging them on in the faith. And it's an encouragement for us too, you see, to... to uh, press on in the Christian faith. Well, it's, it's even uh, contending for the faith. You know, Jude tells uh, writing to, to contend for the faith once the faith was once and for all delivered for the saints, you know. And to contend for that and to, to encourage one another on with that, you know, in that. Uh, and really maintaining the faith, you know. Maintaining and trusting and believing in the historic Christian faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, what he has purchased for us, and believing in his uh, finished work. Silas is a great example, isn't he? He calls him our faithful brother. So it's great to have one another who it is, and iron sharpens iron, and we can encourage one another on in the Christian faith. It's really spurring them on, but not like the jockeys, you know. The poor horse, you see them, uh, I don't follow it, I don't follow it really, you know. But at times you see them a little bit, a slip. Uh, and they're, you know, they're coming to, to the, especially to the end, and they're spurring on the horse, you know. The poor horse is getting, 
looking the sides with the spurs, you know, that they have on their riding boots uh, or the stirrups. And they, uh, it's to spur them on. But we can spur one another on in a different way, can't we? With the word of God and with prayer and encouraging one another to faith and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. And testifying, of course, testimony is a great thing, isn't it? As well. Where do we come from? You know. What's happening and where do we come from? Right. Uh, and so we might be able to follow a little bit there on that, Dave. Uh, where do we come from? Right. In 1 Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen generation. You know, this is way back in the beginning where Peter was writing to them and he told them where they had come from. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So where did they come from? They come from darkness, it says. And who, who were, who once were not a people. Nobody. Oh, they were living, you know. But they weren't really a people as such. But now they are the people of God, you see. And that is so special, you see, that we are uh, the people of God, you know. That is, that, is, that is important, isn't it, for us. And uh, to be called the people of God, that's, that's a really great standing, isn't it? That's a really great uh, person. Um, right. And so uh, there it is, you see. So, um, you see, who had not obtained mercy, it were no mercy for us, but now we have obtained mercy. That's great, isn't it? A great privilege. And so they've come from nothing to this great position that God gives us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Standing then for the truth. So it, standing for the truth of the gospel, you know, is so great and so important. All right. Verse 12, testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. That's great, isn't it? It's, it's the true grace of God. It's not a concocted idea. It's not coming from the old pits and the old enemy and what he would want, you know. But it's coming from the Lord himself. And it's, it's the true message of the gospel uh, brought to us. God's, it's God's free grace. It's God's free undeserved gift of salvation. For us to receive as a gift. That's so wonderful. You know. Right. And what's the rules for a train journey? You know, well, after, with this pandemic, you know, we, we, we just can't go down to the rail, like we did the rail station, and, 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 uh, and go on the train. I have got my pass. That doesn't matter. There's rules now, you see. And so I have to phone up uh, in Rod Heron and book my seat. I have to have a seat. That's the important is because there's only offering so many, excuse me, so many seats. So I have to book my seat. And I get a number. And I can go to the machine then and... Uh, 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 the rail station, the station down there, Mullingar, uh, and they'll give me the ticket. Uh, out of the, I put in, I just type in the number, and out comes the ticket to me. Now, you see, you know, if an inspector was on the train or anything like that, and I didn't have the ticket, he would throw me off, wouldn't he? Because there could be a danger there, you know. So, there it is, you see. You have to have the ticket. You can't get on. You have to have a seat. And the seats are, are, are cover you. You can't just sit anywhere you like. And so it's important to have that ticket. 
And that's the great thing is to, to have our salvation in Christ. We have the ticket for heaven through him. It's a gift of God. And no cost. You know, I didn't, it didn't cost me anything to get that ticket. I just had to put in the number. And it doesn't cost us anything. We, we can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ um, as our Lord and Saviour. And he gave us the free ticket for heaven. That's so wonderful. That's so great. And then the passion. In 1 Peter 5, 14. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Well, that's quite interesting. And that can vary according to the different cultures, you know. And the way it is. Some are more reserved than others. Maybe, uh, 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 you know, different countries. They're quite reserved. And... Uh, and they have a different way of showing affection. Yeah. And so uh, there it is. Uh, the pandemic has changed our use of hospitality. Uh, and it's really down to elbowing, you know, using our elbow. <laughs> uh, so, but there it is. So then the peace. Well, you know, it's a wonderful ending to the letter, isn't it? The peace. Shalom. The Jews. The Jewish word. You know, people. Peace to all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let be. So have that peace. Peace amongst ourselves. The Hebrew greeting is Shalom. Uh, and the Greek greeting is uh, Irene, if I get it right, I don't know what the I don't know what the uh, the French one would be. P P P. P. Oh, is it? Right, very nice. Philippians four seven, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You know, beyond all understanding, the peace of God that you should bring to. And the presence of God with us. We'll find out about that with Job tonight. And God finished up with God's presence with him. That was so wonderful to him. And better than any answer of how why suffering. It says it will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that so wonderful? To guard our hearts and minds. Through Christ Jesus. That is so wonderful. That is so great. That's really profound to dwell on. This is the only hope for us, you see, in our present position and difficulties today. Unbelievers will lose out. If you don't, uh, you know, put your faith and trust in. This great peace that God has and the great Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has purchased that peace at a great price. Peace through his blood on the cross. And so, don't lose that. Trust in him as your Lord and Saviour. Give your life into his hands. It's the only way, the only blessing and the only hope. Christ offers eternal peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's so wonderful. It's so amazing. And so there we conclude with Peter's and Sickly. 1 Peter 5.14 Peace to you all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for your blessings to us. We pray, O oh Lord, your hand upon us, and we ask, O oh Lord, you will guide, though we hit some problems with the internet today, Lord. We pray that you will guide and uphold. We pray, Lord, your blessing. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will direct and guide us, and we pray that people may really know that peace that passes all understanding. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. 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 <laughs>